Time is money, so the old expression goes. And last week, I was running a seminar and I came out with a comment that really resonated with so many members of the audience. They told me about it. They also put it on their feedback forms. And it was all about time and money. My name is Peter Thompson. I'm the UK's most prolific information product creator. And over the last 27 years since I sold my business and so-called retired, I've been writing, creating, and marketing informational products, books, audio programs, videos, you name it, and helping coaches, consultants, speakers, and trainers, and small business owners, people like me and you, to build for themselves a business and a life of choice. And at this seminar last week, we were talking about how to write a book and how to make money sharing our knowledge, experience, and expertise. And obviously, during the course of that, we were also talking about fee rates. And so I said to the audience, how much would it take for you to be paid to use a day of your life? So if you're going to go and do some work for somebody and it was going to use a day of your life, an irreplaceable day of your life, how much do you want to get paid for it? And is what you're charging now the right rate? Now, this wasn't to say that we're trying to rip anybody off. No, not at all. It was to get paid for the value that we deliver. After all, money is the silent applause for a job well done and value delivered to others. But how much is that day worth to you? In a minute, I'm going to share with you an expression that really brought this home to me from a friend of mine, Jill Fielding, a multimillionaire, very successful woman, entrepreneur, uh, that really ju it just makes it all make sense. But let's back to the fees for a moment. How much do you currently charge if you charge fees for your time? And when was the last time you looked at that? And how did you arrive at that number? I know when I first started doing fee-based work after I'd sold my business, I decided that I would do sales training. And so I thought about it for a while and I did some research and found out what was happening in the marketplace. And the average sales trainer, training the sort of salespeople that I wanted to train with what I knew to be my proven, tried and tested systems and ideas, were charging about 500 pounds a day. This is some time ago, as you realize, 27, 28 years ago. So charging 500 pounds a day. And I thought, this can't be right. 500 pounds a day for possibly 10 or 20 people. That, you know, if it was 20 people, it's like, well, it's 500 pounds. If it's 10 people, it's 50 pound a head, 20 people, 25 pound a head. I mean, it just didn't make sense. So I thought, well, no, that can't be right. So I started, just started off by saying, no, it's 2,000 pounds a day. If the market's charging 500 pounds a day, surely this stuff I know, without being cocky in any way, is worth 2,000. And I proved that it was right. And over time, I kept testing the price and, and raising it as I learned how to deliver the material better and people were getting the results of the testimonials to far, far higher numbers than that. So again, it comes back to the question, how much are you prepared to accept for a day of your life? Because it's not a day of your time, is it? You see, we say that time is money, but in fact, money is time as well. Yes, time is money, but money is time because when we make more money, much of the activities that we undertake that perhaps we don't want to undertake, we can get someone else to undertake them by giving them money. So when we set our fee rates, when we set our income at the right level, then we can get more money, therefore we can get more time because we can get more stuff done with the money. Now, how do we do that? Well, one of the ways, of course, is to get paid for what we do more times than the once we do it. Um, let me give you some examples. Way back in the distant, distant past, when I was first in business, I was tracing absconded debtors. And as I've mentioned on one of these videos before, within two years of starting that business, we were being asked to trace 4,000 people a month. Now, how could I leverage that? Well, all I did was I hung on to the information because I knew, particularly with some of my commercial clients who were looking for shopkeepers, I was dealing with lots of the uh, catering trade, with the, the biscuits trade, with the chocolate trade, with the tobacco trade, and all of these people who were dealing with shopkeepers. I knew that if somebody had run off owing Cadbury's money, they'd probably owe Career of Rothman money as well. So I kept this information, having once done the work to find out the information, I could sell it a second time. So in other words, I could get massive leverage by getting paid more than once for doing the work. Subsequently, um, I created systems for my sales processes that I've proven over time would work. 
And so I taught those systems to people in a subsequent business I had, Compass Leasing, so that I didn't have to do the selling, I had other people doing the selling, which was making the money of the business because they were following my system. After that, I started to create audio programs and video programs and books and all the other ways of sharing information, which I'm sure you can do as well. So that having once written a book, I could sell the information again and again and again. In fact, I didn't have to sell the information because it was being sold by the systems that I was creating. So my question to you is, it's twofold or maybe even threefold, is that, I will come back to that idea, by the way, from Jill, uh, is how can you not only get more time for your money, get more money for your time? Does that make sense? I'm sure it does. So there's all of those different ways that I mentioned to you. Now, uh, my friend Jill Fielding, uh, we did a program together, in fact, which was called My Daughter Wanted a Pet, so I bought her a greyhound. A great title that was. And Jill has this expression, which I just think is absolute genius, and it's this. You become wealthy when you separate what you do with your time from what you do for your money. Isn't that beautiful? Let me say it again. You become wealthy when you separate what you do with your time from what you do for your money. So back to my ideas of how do you multiply the effect of your time and the effect of your income is by doing it once and then you're doing something else with your time while the money is still rolling in. What a fantastic strategy that is. I'm sure you've got comments on this, so please do add them down there. If you want to know more about the various ways that I could help you with time and money, then simply drop me an email to success at peterthompson.com and one of my team will contact you and we'll arrange for us to have some time together and see how that can work. And in the meantime, I continue to wish you every success as you continue to have freedom from anything that may have held you back and freedom to be, do and have whatever you set your heart and mind upon, particularly in your decision about the value of your time and the value of the money on your time. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye for now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos. Then click to watch the next video. Remember to visit our website at peterthompson.com and download your free copy of my latest book, How to Write Your Business Book in Five Days or Less. Until next time, every success.